Hello everyone and welcome to a new game for the channel! We are going to be playing Avon Colony, which is a bit of a colony management sim, as you can probably already see by the splash screen in the background. Though, uh, first to note is this large disclaimer. This is currently a beta build, in fact it's a closed beta, so that means that unless you've got uh, um, some sort of discourse with the developers, it is not available. However, on September the 7th, so only a few days' time, it will be moving into open beta over on itch.io, not Steam. This is not going to be in Steam's early access program. It's going to be a beta through itch.io for $24.99 US dollars you'll be able to buy into the beta. I believe that price will be going up to somewhere in the region of $30 in 2017 when the game fully releases. Now, the game has been uh, developed by Mothership Entertainment LLC, and we are going to jump straight in. There's going to be a bit of a um, dialogue um, introducing us to the game, so I'll be mostly quiet whilst that plays. And so, uh, let's begin. Welcome to the Avon Expedition. You've been granted the unique privilege of being nominated as the governor of humanity's first colony outside the solar system. Hooray! This is no small privilege, and it's no exaggeration to say that the future of human civilization is in your hands. Space tea, We've all I'm going to say. We've been in orbit for 300 hours since reaching Avon Prime, so no doubt you've had plenty of time to review the mission briefing. No, we're You'll sleeping, be sorry. down on Vanar which is the closest thing Avon Prime has to planet Earth. There's a great deal of plant life here, but don't be fooled. The atmosphere is primarily carbon dioxide, so we'll need to keep the colony hermetically sealed. We have a small settlement here, and you will assume command upon touchdown. There are no signs of intelligent life so far, but do keep an eye out. Oh dear. Your mission coordinator will be Vori Markov. She and I will be monitoring your progress closely from the colony ship. Good luck, Governor. Thank you very much. Now, as you can see, we've got a, a couple of things unlocked. I've gone through the tutorials and a little bit of the Van Art mission just to, to get my bearings. There are five campaign maps with the um, beta at the moment and then four sandbox missions Welcome as well. To the Avon now. We're going to be jumping straight into Vanna, and we'll see what we can do. I'm not going to be following the kind of tutorial um, missions uh, strictly, as I am, like I said, I've already got my bearings, so there'll be a way that I want to do things, but we will kind of be using them as a guide. Your arrival and are eager to see what their leader can do for them. Fantastic. Vanna is a small colony, one of the friendlier parts of Avon Prime. Water and plant life are plentiful here, and most crops grow well. First, we'll need a supply of water, so we need to build a water pump. But uh, before we jump to that, let me quickly go over the display. We've got, over here, we've got various overlay modes. If you're used to anything like uh, um, city skylines, then these will be familiar to you. We can check out the air quality. We can check out how long people have to commute between places, all this sort of stuff structure overlays, water. Um, these are overlays on the, the map itself to give us an idea of where the best locations are things. Much the same with the farming overlay. And then we have got colony control panel. We can get a lot of information from here. We can uh, set up policies to do things like rationing, that sort of stuff. I haven't played with most of these things. I've only really um, just got my, my feet wet with the game, honestly. Uh, we've got trade, which we'll be opening up later. Here are all of our building options. Each one is basically a sub-menu, and you've got various things in there. And then down here, we have our resources. So, for example, food and how fast we're consuming it. Same with water. Same with nanites, in fact. Now, nanites, they're basically um, our omni-building resource. You use nanites for everything rather than having to stockpile and manage wooden planks and stone bricks and hammers and nails and all that sort of stuff. Um, eh. I like that in most colony games. I must be honest, I'm one of those people who actually likes the micromanagement of different building materials, but this does make the game much smoother, much easier to deal, to work with. We've got storage, air quality, and population. These are basically just little um, visual cues to 
how much we've got versus how much we can have. Um, interestingly, we are actually at 100% for for housing, um, because all we've got is a little habitation module, really. But we'll also get a little bit of extra information here, like how many people are unhappy versus how many people are happy, or how many people are ill or addicted to things or unhealthy, how many people have got a job, so on and so forth. Uh, air quality. Now, here we're not producing oxygen, we're just making the, the air that we've got higher quality. Uh, as it gets to lower quality, then that would be represented by the fact that, it, well, it's not really breathable anymore. You know, it's mostly carbon dioxide at this point. That's, that's not really air. Uh, not, not for us, anyway. Um, and over here we've got uh, electricity, how much we're using versus how much we're producing. Now, those are very, very important things. In fact, they're so important, we want to build more straight away. The next thing, we are going to go ahead and build a water pump. Now, you'll notice that the water pump will get different amounts of water depending on where it goes. Uh, I think we'll build it over here next to this tunnel. Of course, because the colony is hermetically sealed, everything will be indoors, including the streets, if you like. They'll all be in tunnels. Now, we've got uh, shortcut keys of 1 to pause the game, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for the different speed levels. I would also like to upgrade some of the buildings. Now, you can upgrade more or less. Uh, well, most of the buildings, honestly, have upgrade levels. Um, because this, this colony operates on T, that's why. Um, now we're going to upgrade this to a drone, uh, up, uh, sorry, a drone hub level 2. It'll cost me 12 nanites to upgrade, but I'll get two drones, which will help me quite a lot. Now we've completed that objective and we've gotten 12 nanites. We've got a new I a mission. For you from the inhabitants we would of like Cali. to get some food. Well, you know, that makes sense. Uh, we'll get 50 potash, which our farms can use to accelerate their efforts. Now there are two types of farming structures. There are farms which just farm out in the open and are subject to winter um, issues. Basically, in the cold months, then all growing of plants stops, literally stops completely. A greenhouse can manage in the winter, but overall its output is less, and in the winter it's half of what it is normally, so uh, that is definitely something to keep in mind. Now, melons seem to be the best for this colony as it happens. Uh, anywhere better than 7.2? Oh, we've got some 7.2s for melons over here. However, I know I'm going to want to hook up to this geotherm, so let's pop that there and then see if that has affected this, because effectively the farms are going to be working on the nearby tiles, and that's what this is based on, so I wanted to check if placing this there is going to tamper with that but it looks like we got 7.5 over there which is glorious i'm also going to lay down some extra um tunnels now be aware that by doing this i am actually using up some of my energy in order to get those placed down so you know that's not don't place too many of these because each one uses a little bit of power and you have a very finite amount of it if you run out of power completely you can massively bottleneck yourself in fact you can bottleneck yourself to the point you have to start again if you use up so much power that your drone bay can't work because then you can't build more power it's a terrible moment to realize uh we'll go ahead and place a farm there but also since we were getting some decent corn 5.7 any better ones around here five six six point three um 6.3 there as well. You know what? Sure. I think we'll go ahead and pop that in there. Now then, let's have a quick look. Farming. We've built a farm. We've got 50 potash and 5 nanites. Um, we've also built solar energy, which was um, a another mission. You will complete missions if you build them out of out of order, and that that's perfectly fine. Um, so we got... 4 nanites and 11 quinoa, which is great, actually, because we're not producing quinoa. A new mission is available. Okay, let's build a mine. The best place to put one is right on top of that big green copper deposit. Okay, 13 quinoa, 5 nanites. I like the sounds of that. Now, there are two different types of mine. There's the laser mine, which works 40% faster, but destroys half of what it's mining. So, I've not ever felt like using it so far. Um... There are a couple of other things that we're going to want to do fairly soon as well. Now, you may have noticed that I had corn and I had melons. That is because the diversity of your diet impacts how good the diet is for your colonists, how happy they are with it as well. So, uh, do try to get a, a nice, diverse mix of foodstuffs. Otherwise, yes, melons grow the best, but if that's all people are eating, they're going to get ill. 
Um, or at least they're going to not be very happy. Five nights, thirteen quinoa there, and your reward available. Is satisfactory. Reward. I've been authorized to provide your colony with a small reward. Choose wisely. Excellent. Well, currently we're not producing nanites, but hopefully we're going to get onto that in a moment. We're going to go for the rice again because it'll give us a bit more of a diverse diet. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build a nanite processor straight away. It'll convert iron and copper into nanites. And because nanites are super important pretty much for everything we do, don't neglect this. Otherwise, you're going to be entirely reliant on missions for your building materials. I've consulted with Commissioner Veronica. You do need more power, yes. I'd like to make yes. a few recommendations as to how to best serve your people. Thank you very much. We'll get 16 ration packs. High Command would like us to build a line of tunnels out towards the nearest geothermal plant. Uh, uh, sorry, vent, and build a geothermal generator on it. Very well. Now, geotherms are a bit of an interesting one. If you're on... Um, they can, like, an, an, uh, an exposed vent can produce toxic um, gas, which can be pulled into your colony if you've got any air intake uh, vents. However, if you build a geothermal vent on it, or rather plant on the vent, then that completely mitigates that problem. So it's almost always worth doing, even if you don't necessarily need the power. If it's near your colony, then it's probably a wise, wise move. Uh, now then... We are probably hurting for jobs. Yeah, we've got 45% of our jobs are filled. That is not good. That is not good at all. We're going to need a lot more jobs. Um, we could use 32 nanites to build this, and we'd be able to support 36 colonists with it. And I like those numbers. So let's go ahead and place this somewhere around about... Actually, no. First things first. Oh, well, we're building a geotherm. The geotherm will be fine. We'll go ahead and place that down there. And then I would like to run these up around it. Now, you don't need to run these um, roads, if you like, everywhere in the colony. But I like to. I think it, it makes it look nicer, for one thing. It kind of gives you neat little blocks to work in, or not blocks, if, if, if you like. Because often mine aren't uh, perfect squares or anything like that. Sometimes they're quite higgledy-piggledy. Nevertheless, they do make the colony look a little bit more uh, intentional. Uh, I think it looks a, a little bit nicer. Um, also, I think it does impact people's ability to move from one place to another. They can just go through the buildings... But I've received uh, notifications previously where people were saying there aren't enough uh, tunnels for me to get to and from my place of work. So, you know, it's worth keeping in mind. So we've got our 16 ration packs there. A new mission is available. Going to need some more living space for our colonists. Build a small apartment building. Oh, uh, well, okay. I guess I preempted you there, and I guess that's fine as well. Uh, sure, I'll place this down here, and they'll be fairly close to more or less everything, so... I'm all right with that. Uh, we're doing okay with power. There is another power building that I would like to build, and that is the energy battery. Though, at this point, it's worth looking at the tiers. Now, you can notice I can build all the way up to tier 3 for solar plants. However, I can only build the tier 1 energy battery, and for that matter, the geothermal plants. And that's because I've not got an example of the second tier yet. You can only build up to the tier that you've already got in your colony. So if I want to, for example, have an energy battery of a level 2, I need to place a level 1, then upgrade it, and then I can build a level 2 from that point on. And when I upgrade the level 2 that I've got to level 3, from that point on, I can just build a level 3. So it's kind of a little bit of progression in the way there. I do apologize for the... Uh, kind of monotonous and, and uh, droning sound of, well, the drones. I mean, I guess I guess it's it's fitting for them. Now then, how are we doing for food? We're doing all right for food, but our water supply is not amazing. So what I would like to do is actually upgrade this. So let's go ahead and upgrade you. Now, part of that is also going to be because we just don't have enough people in our colony yet, which is a big problem. Uh, the following was added to your colony's inventory. 7 nanites, 18 soda and build a nanite processor which i already preempted 47 beer our colonists will be happy have a with new that request for you boss storage capacity ah uh, yes our storage capacity is getting a little bit uh, a little bit full isn't it um to hold all of colonies food water copper and nanites very well let's have a look then we can build a small uh, sorry a mini storage depot 
I would actually like to build one of the larger ones, but I guess this will do. We'll place it just about there. Now, eventually, we're going to be able to expand that, I believe. And we're going to bring this down on this side. Um, given that we've got plenty of energy now, I'm going to go... Oh, uh, apparently, I'd, what we don't have is plenty of nanites. Haha. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, we can just cancel building that one, then. And here is winter. Now, winter approaches. Impaired power generation and food cultivation. Your colony is highly likely to lose power. Well, I hope not. But maybe, maybe we should uh, upgrade if we can afford it. We've got 12 nanites. Um, because we've just got a uh, bunch of nanites delivered. Um, no, we're looking okay. Now, the nice thing with the energy battery and why I built it is it actually modifies the power production of any power generating structure it's adjacent to. Also, when you've got a surplus of power, you can absorb power and store it in there. And then when you run out, you can just start returning that power to the rest of the colony. Burst mode provides 40 power from the battery storage to the surrounding electrical grid. I guess that's if you've got a lot of power. Right. Energy battery idle. Switching to idle mode. Because our energy reserves are, like, our surplus is dropping, the battery has stopped pulling in power because it's affecting the grid too much. But it doesn't need to discharge yet because we are still um, in a positive energy situation. Your progress is satisfactory. Right. Good. I've been authorized to provide your colony with a small reward. I could do with more immigrants, honestly. Um, both, all of these things I can get in the future, but right now it's probably more useful for me to... Well, that being said, no. We're going to take the nanite, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Can I build spaceport buildings now? Yes, I can. We can build the immigrant center, which will bring in more immigrants directly. Um, we could put them over here if we wanted to. Um, no, I'm going to leave the area around that for future energy expansion. A new mission is available. Now your colony needs more inhabitants. Ah, I, I knew this was going to be coming up soon. Place an immigrant center to allow some of the colonists in the orbiting colony ships to migrate to your colony. I like that idea that, you know, currently they've just gone to this planet, but, well, you know, we need a proper base there before we start, you know, just landing the ship and then everyone gets out. Because once these giant beasts of ships land, they're never getting back into the sky again. You know, they, I imagine they've got all kinds of factories and stuff up there. So, you know, there's just loads of people awake. Um, they've been thawed, just, you know, on these massive ships in orbit. And when the, the colony is, is capable of supporting them, some of them are like, yeah, I'd like to go down there. Um, they can also leave, though, so uh, bear that in mind. If, you, if they're too unhappy, they will just go. It requires eight power. We can happily support that once we turn the battery on. Um, as far as winter, hmm, I want to spend a little bit more time first. Let's have a look if we can't increase this by placing another solar panel. Now, that isn't going to be as good um, because it's going to be working at half power, but uh, it, it should be enough to give us what we need here. And then we'll go ahead and place this down. Now, of course, I could have placed this before, but I would have been uh, uncomfortably close to my maximum power output. We'll go ahead and we'll place it there. There we go. Now, I can't afford to build the trade hub at the moment, but that's fine. Or perhaps it's locked out, because I do... I'm fairly certain I had the nanites previously. But there we are. That's probably uh, some sort of mission objective or something. So it's locking me out of it for the time being. Obviously, right now, food is not so great because we're not actually producing any food. There we go. So on that note... Oh, there we are. We've already got our first colony ship. Now, this three new colonists per trip. I keep pressing one to go to the slowest speed. I'm used to space being the pause button. So I do apologize that I keep pausing the game. I'm, I'm just still trying to get into my head that one is actually not the slow, uh, the slow speed, one is no speed at all. Um, right, so for getting immigration, we've got 16 Kronoa, 6 nanites, and for habitation, which was this, we got 24 nanites. Br brilliant. So, uh, again, we preempted a mission. I hope you're keeping the happiness of your colonists in mind. We'd like to see this colony home. grow. If you can Remember, support 50 colonists, together. we will reward you with nanites and food. Okay, well, fair enough. 25 beer, 10 nanites. Oh, we might do. Mission is available. 
We're quickly getting to a point where the air inside our hermetically sealed colony will turn foul if we're not careful. The geothermal generator in particular will pollute the air fairly quickly. Place an intake fan to help the filter the external atmosphere and bring oxygen into your colony. It's a good idea to place this as close to the geothermal as you can. Okay, well that's a pretty good uh, bit of advice there. Let's have a look. So air quality over there is 98. It's 94 over here, but it may continue to go down. So there's two ways we can deal with this. The expensive to operate requires 12 power. That's a lot in this game. And five workers is an air filter. Maintains an Earth-like oxygen ratio inside the colony. It's much more expensive than an air intake, but also more efficient and is not vulnerable to toxic gas emissions. Or you can have an air intake fan. It only requires six power and four workers, and it draws air from outside, you know, the correct sort of levels. However, as it mentions there, uh, any kind of toxic um, atmosphere um, or, or anything in the air that you don't want in your colony will get in your colony through these things. So, you know, it's, it's something you need to be aware of. Uh, I'm actually... Hmm, I, I think we could go along with one of these, and we'll just put it up there, and that should counteract the uh, air quality drop from our geotherm. Right then, now, although we're out of winter now, we're producing a healthy amount of food, I dislike the fact that uh, we were so uh, cut off from, from any additional um, food over winter, so I would really like to get um, a greenhouse going. Let's find a nice place for one. 6.2 over the 7.4. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's probably the best place that we can put one. Oh, no, 7.1 down here. All right, I'll go with that. We'll, we'll have a greenhouse down here. I'll we'll just pump that right there. And we'll then go ahead and build out these a little bit further. Now, this is going to produce probably less rice than we would have gotten if we'd built a farm there. However, the nice thing with this is that it will give us um, some food growth over winter as well. Our little energy battery over here can start absorbing power again. In fact, I'm going to upgrade it. I only need seven nanites, but it'll have two times the energy capacity. One of these may be able to carry us all the way through a winter if we upgrade it a few times. Now let's uh, get a little bit more speed and we check out what other things are going on. We want a trade hub now. That's fantastic. I do like a trade hub. Now, we're going to need a little while before we can build it, so it comes down to trying to... Uh, get the rewards for various other things. We've got the trade hub, and we've got to reach 50 colonists. Yeah, it's going to be a little while. Let's check on how our colonists are doing. Our job filled 27%. 30% now. Uh, that's really bad. We desperately need more colonists. Like, desperately need them. Um, in fact, we need them so badly, I'm going to build another um, immigrant shuttle i'm not gonna build the the trader yet we need to get more people down here faster before we even think about building a trade hub but i will waste a bunch of nanites on building this up yeah i know it's a waste shush i like it it makes my colony look like it's all in the right place ah good old colony everything in its proper place, everything looking nice. We'll probably build something out along there as well, and we'll have these two grids, and people will be able to get to and from most places directly from the actual uh, tunnel network. And if you actually look in towards the tunnels, you can Happy see people, here on and you can click Prime, on them. It's a lot They're working in the film. Fantastic. I'm glad you feel that way. Genuinely, I am. Um, right. Pleased to meet you, uh, Governor. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, you're fairly happy. 82 happiness. Okay. Oh, you're happy with each other. Oh, what a lovely colony we've got here. Absolutely wonderful. And now these are basically the, the buildings you start with. I don't think you can do anything with them. I don't think you can upgrade them or even get rid of them for that matter. I think they're they're there for for good. Now we've got three new colonists arriving there, three new colonists arriving there. We've got very few colonists because we've got very few people working in these things and that's affecting how efficient they are but uh since the the lowest i've ever seen them is three having two with one person working in each one is much better than having one with two people working in it so uh, we'll see how that goes 
Uh, but we're going to be waiting for a little while whilst we build up our colonists. I'm probably going to wrap the episode up here because I am going to be waiting. I'm not going to continue until we've got about 50% of our jobs filled. I feel that is super, super important. So I'm going to do that off camera and I will bring you back when that is done. I hope you've been enjoying the video so far and are looking forward to the series. If you have any feedback, then do leave me a comment down below. Or if you would like to see more Avon Colony in the future, then leave a like on the video. But until next time, take care, everyone.